Soon after news broke that New Line Cinema hired a new screenwriter to work on the long and development adaptation of Neil Gaiman's comic The Sandman, star and director Joseph Gordon-Levitt exited the project citing creative differences. Production was scheduled to take place later this year when Levitt took to his Facebook page to announce his departure. Gordon-Levitt explained that when the project moved from Warner Brothers to New Line, he and the studio had different ideas as to how a Sandman movie should be developed. The project is now moving forward with final Destination 5 and The Conjuring 2 writer Eric Heiserer. No director, star, or release date has been revealed. Mark Byers sell a Sandman movie without Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's a tough question, Ashley. I'm going to buy it without Joseph Gordon-Levitt. It's harder for me to buy it with all these other things that are going on because now we don't have a director, we don't have a star. <laughs> we got a guy who wrote Final Destination 5. We, we haven't seen The Conjuring 2 yet, so we don't know how that's going to shape up, but it makes me very nervous because this is always one of those properties. Shnep, I know a lot of people ask you on Heroes all the time. It's like, what's a comic book franchise that has not gotten the movie treatment yet that you desperately want to see? Any of these DC Vertigo properties are good material. I think yeah. Sandman might be the best of all of them. And to yeah. see somebody who is as passionate as what he acts in and produces as Joseph Gordon-Levitt is, for him to come in and say, oh, you guys are totally botching this mission now. I'm stepping out. That does make me a little nervous but just having him as the star of Sandman I don't need to see him in this movie in order to get me to buy it so I still think that it could be a very promising project it's got a lot of potential but I am a little nervous about all these other things going on behind the scenes Roka how do you feel uh this is absolutely one of my favorite uh I don't know what do you call it comic book properties ever created like ever I mean it's it's on par with Watchmen and mm -hmm. Kingdom Come and Dark Knight Returns for me yeah. it's almost an untouchable thing and so when it was announced I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt I think he's a great actor and he's obviously shown he can do a lot of different characters different range 50-50 Looper all these kinds of things that are great I wasn't always sold on the fact that he could be Sandman Tom Hiddleston was always, in my sure. mind, the choice, and Cumberbatch as well, but obviously he's taken with Doctor Strange. So for me, I'm buying this because it opens up the possibility that Hiddleston could step in or someone of, of a more lanky, kind of longer body shape, mm. which is what I always felt was great about Dream. And now we open the possibility of all these uh, other people coming in to possibly vie for the role. And then New Line has shown they can handle the Lord of the Rings stuff, so they've shown they can handle franchises and properties and make them work. I'm, I'm buying it tentatively just for that possibility, but I am worried how they're going to make these into movies because they're they're interconnected they're like short stories within each right. volume and to me it always worked better as a as a tv sh as a tv show on hbo or cinemax where they could go as far as they wanted to go or right. showtime would have a serial so. killer convention <laughs> yeah, um, right. I, exactly yeah, I, yeah I'm, I sadly sell this i think that this is a botch for uh for the property i think not only was uh, gordon levitt going to star in it remember he was going to direct it yeah and he was talking with Gaiman. He loves the property. He's read the comics. I think you had someone, it's like, look, he doesn't look like Morpheus, but that's, I don't care about whether actor looks mm. like the character or not. It's how they perform and whether they're a good actor or not. Mm. Gordon Levitt is a, a great actor. Absolutely. Um, he proved that he knows how to direct with Don John. I was excited to see what he was going to do with the Sandman. And I, and I felt like, I know it sounds weird, but I felt like at least he was going to protect that character and not let it get fucked up. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like hearing the writer of Final Destination 5 doesn't put any faith. I feel like, wow, really? Mm -hmm. You're going to make a goofy, like, who is he going to be like a spook creature? The Boogeyman, the Sandman. Yeah. They don't understand the property. <laughs> the Candyman. Yeah, he's like, the yeah. Candyman, just say Sandman. Splash sand in your face. He shows up. It's like, <laughs> I could see a bunch of dumb producers just effing this up. Yeah. And that's why I think Gordon Lev was like, look, dude, I was I was doing this over at Warner Brothers. They they had me. They had my back. Maybe it went to New Line. And they were like, No, no, no. We're gonna go in the horror vein. We wanna we wanna compete against Dimension. I don't even know if Dimension's still Dimension's around. still around. <laughs> They're still around. A bunch of weird ghost, creepy kids in a in a little locked closet. Little people knocking on doors and stuff. You know, I'm. I don't want to swear anymore. I'm done talking about it. <laughs> Could you see The Conjuring Two though, and have that change your mind? Could you watch that? And be like, oh, well, this guy did write The Conjuring Two. If so The Conjuring maybe... Two is as scary as the first Conjuring, I love The Conjuring. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great return to horror. I put a lot of my faith in James Wan. Uh, I know James Wan is directing the second one, so and I have not seen it, so I can't mm -hmm. bag on that writer for The Conjuring Two. I did not like Final Destination Five. But if he does a great job with a Conjuring 2, I will probably change my mind and look forward to the Sandman. But my gut instinct is that they're changing it yeah. away from what it should be, which is what all of us Sandman readers want, yeah. is that Neil Gaiman adaptation, which you're like, you can have six movies, 
don't f it up, and I feel like they're gonna f it up. It's it's fascinating to me to see how they how people can consistently mess up these properties that deal with heaven and mm. hell. They're so rich with our own ideas, cultural cultural ideas, mythology. Depending, it doesn't matter where you're from, where you grew up. The idea of heaven and hell in all cultures, in all languages, in all countries, have these interesting characters that populate them. And I think that's what Gaming did a really great job of bringing into the Sandman. Yep. Like, they messed up the Constantine TV show. They, the, the Constantine film's okay, but it's not great. And now here we go, here's another situation where they have a potential to really explore these very deep, deep mythology and deep... Uh, uh, Baroque, uh, can't we have like a little floating baby in <laughs> yeah. there? Where are the jump scares? It's the Sandman. Hey, Get you out of here. here. You bring up the concept of heaven, of hell, of death. Ashley Moe was one you closer to it because it's her birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sandman. We have Sandman. one more buy or sell. What is it?